Welcome to our Science and Technology Briefing show. Today, we've got a lineup of fascinating stories that are sure to keep you on the edge of your seat. First up, China's first international commercial aerospace launch center in Hainan is now operational, but it wasn't all smooth sailing as an exploding rocket mishap stole some of the spotlight. The new hub aims to rival SpaceX's Starlink with its own satellite constellations, marking a significant milestone in China's space ambitions. Stay tuned for more on this thrilling development. Next, we celebrate the incredible achievement of Tallulah Martinez, a 17-year-old from East Sussex, who has just won the Game Concept Award at BAFTA's 2024 Young Game Designers Competition. Her game, The Whispering Wilds, captivates players with its ancient magic and open-world exploration. This young talent is already making waves in the gaming industry, and we can't wait to see what she creates next. We'll dive deeper into her journey and future aspirations. Lastly, Japan's Nikkei stock average has hit the 40,000 mark for the first time in nearly three months, buoyed by a surge in semiconductor-related shares and a rebound in the U.S. stock market. This milestone highlights the resilience and potential of Japan's financial markets. We'll explore the factors driving this impressive rise and what it means for investors. Please stay tuned for the detailed coverage of these stories and more. Nikkei Asia Australia's resource and energy exports have taken a hit, dropping 10% by value over the last financial year, a trend that the Australian government warns could worsen due to escalating tensions between China and Western countries. The Department of Industry, Science and Resources released a quarterly outlook projecting that exports, which generated 417 billion Australian dollars, 277 billion dollars, through June 2024, will continue to decline, potentially falling to 356 billion Australian dollars by the following year. The normalization of commodity prices after the spike caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine has been a significant factor, with iron ore prices stabilizing after a 30% fall earlier this year. The outlook also highlights geopolitical risks, as 35% of Australia's resource and energy export income comes from China. The US and Europe are pursuing strategies to reduce their reliance on China, leading to increased tariffs and duties on Chinese goods. This shift could impact Australia's exports if China's manufacturing base diminishes in favor of North America and Western Europe, where higher transport costs might limit market access for Australian producers. Additionally, the report forecasts a decline in earnings from lithium, a key battery mineral, as oversupply persists and demand for electric vehicles drops. South China Morning Post China's private aerospace industry faced a major setback when a structural failure caused the Tianlong-3 rocket to crash and explode during a static fire test in Hunan province. This incident comes at a time when China was celebrating the opening of its first international commercial aerospace launch center in Hainan. The Hainan facility, covering 133 acres, is poised to conduct its first rocket launches in the second half of this year, aiming to provide both domestic and international launch services. Despite the mishap, the launch center represents a significant milestone in China's ambition to build its own satellite constellations, akin to SpaceX's Starlink. The commercial space market in China has seen rapid growth, with an estimated annual growth rate of over 20% from 2017 to 2024. However, the accident has raised concerns about the future of China's commercial rocket industry, prompting calls for increased regulatory oversight and safety reviews. The Tianlong-3 rocket's unexpected launch and subsequent crash near a populated area have highlighted the risks involved, although fortunately, there were no casualties. Industry insiders believe this incident will lead to more cautious approaches from private rocket companies and stricter regulations from authorities. BBC. Tallulah Martinez, a 17-year-old game designer from Hastings, East Sussex, has won the prestigious Game Concept Award for 15- to 18-year-olds at BAFTA's 2024 Young Game Designers Competition. Her winning design, The Whispering Wilds, is set in a world of ancient magic, where players explore an open world and discover the four covens of dusk, dawn, day, and night. Tallulah expressed her excitement about the recognition, stating that she designed the game to be enjoyable for people of all ages. She hopes that playing The Whispering Wilds will feel like experiencing an art piece or painting through the environment. The online award ceremony was streamed on BAFTA's YouTube channel, and the winning games, designs, and artwork will be displayed at the Science Museum in London and the Science and Industry Museum in Manchester. BAFTA is committed to supporting young talent in the gaming industry by providing hands-on experience and creating accessible pathways into game design careers. Tallulah aspires to pursue a career in game design, seeing this award as a significant step toward her goal. Associated Press 
The United Nations General Assembly has endorsed a Chinese proposed resolution, with backing from the United States, urging affluent nations to bridge the growing divide with less developed countries in accessing and benefiting from artificial intelligence, AI. This development follows the adoption of the first UN resolution on AI in March, led by the US and co sponsored by 123 countries, including China. Both resolutions, though non binding, underscore the shared commitment of the US and China to influence the future of AI technology while fostering international cooperation. Chinese UN Ambassador Fu Song praised the US's role in advancing this initiative and emphasized the rapid progress of AI technology. He criticized the US Treasury Department's proposed restrictions on investments in China's AI sector, arguing that such sanctions could hinder global AI development and cooperation. The Chinese resolution advocates for a fair, inclusive, and non-discriminatory business environment and highlights the necessity of international measures to mitigate the risks associated with AI, including its military applications. Nikkei Asia, Japan's Nikkei stock average surged past the 40,000-point mark for the first time in nearly three months, driven by gains in semiconductor-related shares and a rebound in the U.S. stock market. The index reached a peak of 40,066.93 with companies like Tokyo Electron and Avantis leading the charge amid the AI boom. Financial institutions also saw gains, as investors speculated that rising market yields would enhance interest margins. The Nikkei had previously hit an all-time high in March, buoyed by Japanese corporate governance improvements and shareholder returns, but faced setbacks due to the yen's depreciation. The recent rally reflects renewed investor confidence in Japan's economic prospects and the tech sector's potential. Associated Press, in California, lawmakers are evaluating a pioneering bill that mandates AI companies to implement safety measures to prevent their systems from being exploited for catastrophic purposes, such as disrupting the state's electric grid or aiding in the creation of chemical weapons. The bill, authored by Democratic State Senator Scott Weiner, targets AI models that require over $100 million in computing power to train, aiming to preemptively address potential future risks. Despite the bill's intent to establish safety standards, it faces strong opposition from tech giants like Meta and Google, who argue that the regulations should focus on malicious users rather than developers. Governor Gavin Newsom has promoted California's proactive stance on AI but cautioned against overregulation. The bill also proposes the creation of a new state agency to oversee AI development and enforce best practices, though opponents warn that such measures could stifle innovation and drive companies out of state. Proponents argue that immediate action is necessary to avoid repeating past mistakes in regulating social media. Yahoo US, South Georgia Technical College has appointed Ray S. Johnson as the new assistant coach for its men's intercollegiate basketball team for the 2024-2025 season, while also assigning him teaching duties in the sports and fitness management academic program. Johnson brings a wealth of experience from his previous roles at Tuskegee University, Columbus State University, and Hawaii Pacific University, among others. He has a notable background in player development, strength and conditioning, and defense, which he honed during his tenure at Tuskegee University. Johnson's military service, including his role as an associated head coach for all Army sports, further complements his extensive coaching resume. SGTC President Dr. John Watford expressed confidence that Johnson's diverse experience would be a significant asset to both the college and its athletic programs. Johnson's responsibilities will encompass a broad range of tasks, from classroom instruction to team management and travel logistics. The Jets, under head coach Chris Ballauer, have shown promising performance, including a notable run to the NJCAA National Tournament in the 2021-2022 season. Johnson's addition to the coaching staff is anticipated to bolster the team's prospects further. South China Morning Post, the Biden administration is launching a new initiative to address the looming labor shortage in the U.S. semiconductor industry, leveraging some of the $5 billion allocated for the National Semiconductor Technology Center, NSTC, under the 2022 Chips and Science Act. This Workforce Partner Alliance aims to fund up to 10 workforce development projects with budgets ranging from $500,000 to $2 million each. The initiative is a response to dire projections that the U.S. could face a shortage of 90,000 technicians by 2030, jeopardizing the nation's goal to produce at least 20% of the world's most advanced chips. Michael Barnes, senior manager of workforce development at Natcast, emphasized the critical need to develop a robust domestic semiconductor workforce ecosystem. Since the enactment of the CHIPS Act, over 50 community colleges have introduced or expanded semiconductor-related programs. 
Major semiconductor firms like Intel, TSMC, Samsung, and Micron Technology have committed substantial investments in workforce development, each earmarking $40 million to $50 million for this purpose. The Commerce Department has recently awarded $6.7 million to Rogue Valley Micro Devices to support the establishment of a new factory in Florida, focusing on chips for defense and biomedical applications, marking the 12th grant from the manufacturing program. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 do brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 do brief via email. Can't get it.